thank you for joining today. Um, it's a real honor to be with you here today um, on behalf of Congressman Andy Kim and our wonderful panelists for this really important topic. This webinar is actually coming at a perfect time since the peak months for hurricane activity is August through October, and then hurricane season officially ends on November 30th. This year, it is predicted that there will be an active hurricane season, including 40 to 20 storms with high winds, of which six to 10 can become hurricanes. Any type of storm is a scary time with many unknowns. Those of us who have lived through Superstorm Sandy or the remnants of Hurricane Ida know how disruptive and unsettling these storms are. For those individuals who have low vision or who are blind, it is an especially frightening time. Our goal today is to provide you with information which will help you prepare for a storm, know what to do during the storm, and access available resources if you experience loss due to a storm. Again, I wanna sincerely thank our speakers who are all experts in their field, and all of them have worked really hard to provide you with the most current and helpful information. This webinar will be recorded. I will be emailing it out to all the panelists to send out to their networks, and it will be available on Congressman Kim's website and social media pages. There will be a time at the end of the webinar for questions, and for now we're asking you to put them in the chat room and we'll get to as many as possible. So to start us off, Congressman Kim could not be here today. He, he misses being here with you, but he did record a message that he wanted me to share with all of you. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Hi everyone, I'm Congressman Andy Kim, and I wanna say thank you for all of you for gathering to all the incredible uh, state organizations that are helping host this webinar today. I appreciate it. And to the New Jersey Office of Emergency Management and the other hosts today, thank you for the great work that you're doing, uh, being there for the deaf, blind, and low vision communities to prepare us for inclement weather strikes, to be able to make sure that our communities have what we need and the information needed Thanks for doing that. My team is really proud to be able to partner with these incredible organizations as well as local disability activists who have really helped me and my team understand the challenges that are out there and how we need to be able to do better to be able to deliver specific needs for our disability community. That's something that we know we're still dealing with to be able to make sure we're doing better. We've seen it in my community with Superstorm Sandy we can and must do better in terms of being able to get information out there to be able to help support people at their time of greatest need. Today, we're proud to be able to bring important information specifically for those who are blind, hard of hearing, or have low vision. Our goal is to help close the gaps in accessing life-saving guidance. So I hope that this is helpful to all of you and I hope that this continues to foster that attention and awareness uh, that we need to make sure that we're providing to everyone across our state. No one should be left out of learning and understanding the safety that we need to be faced with, especially when it comes to these crises and these challenges that we, that we may face going forward. So now I'll let the experts go on and share their incredible resources to help you stay safe. So thanks so very much, and I appreciate it. Take care. So our first speaker is Kelly Boyd, who is the Access and Functional Needs Planner at the New Jersey Office of Emergency Management. So Kelly, take it away. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. As mentioned, I work out of the New Jersey Office of Emergency Management most days. Today, I'm out in Galveston, Texas for the National CERT Conference. And I've been presenting on disability and access and functional needs uh, issues to many members of CERT. So uh, today I'd like to give you an overview of various tips that you can use to prepare for hurricanes and other events. And I do not see the slides on my screen. So I'm not sure if anyone else sees them or not but we can make them available to everybody. Okay. No, I don't. Oh, 
disasters of all types affect New Jersey. It be, could be snowstorms and um, actually terrorist events, not just hurricanes. So I'm going to talk a little bit more generally than just hurricanes today. And uh, this presentation, uh, we're at the first slide here, which just mentions my name and title. At the end, I'll provide you with my contact info so we can go to the next slide. And I will be going through these very quickly, but I wanted to make sure you still have them at the end. So if Lynette, right. if you're able to yeah. advance. Let's see, it's not advancing. Not advancing. Yeah. Okay, I'll just keep going. Okay. So to start with, I always encourage everyone with any type of disability or access and functional need. And what that means for those who don't know is someone perhaps who does not have transportation um, because they're unable to drive due to a disability or perhaps they are unable to afford a vehicle. Uh, it also includes folks who do not speak English or speak limitedly um, or even folks who need supervision. So it's a very broad category. And what I encourage you to do to start is to do an assessment of what you might think you would need during an emergency or disaster situation. And think about the disasters that affect your community. I know that varies a bit throughout New Jersey, but overall it's relatively similar. And what would you need to do in each of those types of situations? And to begin with, think about do you require assistance during activities of daily living? I myself, I do not have a visual impairment, but I have severe rheumatoid arthritis and I use a wheelchair. So I have a personal care assistant as some of you may have. Uh, you want to think about during a hurricane or a snowstorm, something like that, could this person get to you? And if not, what is your backup plan? If you have a personal care assistant who comes from an agency, you can talk to the agency about what the backup plan is. For me, I direct hire. So I talk to each person uh, that I've hired and see, would you be able to uh, get to me in an event? Do you have a vehicle that would go through snow uh, or you know, flooding, things like that? Some say yes, some say no. Uh, if need be, I will go stay with family. Some people will choose to stay in a hotel. And um, I always recommend that people have an out-of-state contact. I have one in PA, I have my brother in Virginia, where you could potentially stay if there's a big event like Sandy coming. And also, if you have important medical records or insurance, things like that, always make sure you keep copies with a loved one, someone, a very trusted individual. And, and I really stress trusted because if your house is destroyed and flooding uh, due to a storm and, or other issues, you don't want to lose all these documents and not have a backup. And that includes even a mortgage or things like that. So keep that in mind. Some people put it on a um, flash drive but keep in mind if the power's out, you may not be able to go plug that in at a hotel or a shelter. So the other thing you'll want to make sure you're doing if you're not already is getting alerts and think of the method that you would best like to receive those. You can sometimes sign up through your township or municipality and get phone calls or text alerts. There are various ways that you can do that. And uh, NJ211 is a great resource. If you hit text 898-211, you can start to get text alerts that way. And it will also prompt you to sign up for New Jersey Register Ready. Um, just to back up a bit, uh, Lynette's on the slide now about conducting an assessment. So. Later on, um, again, you'll get these slides and can go back and get a just a refresher on what you would need to do. But think you want to definitely find out what emergency plans exist where you live, work, and socialize. Okay. So we could go to the next slide. These, this is just a quick overview of how to develop an emergency plan. So we can go to the next slide. 
you want to have escape routes and and all for instance if maybe there's a little fire in your home you might just go next door um if there's a large event again think about where you would want to go a hotel a friend's home keep in mind sometimes they do set up shelters it's often last minute because they don't want to put the shelter in harm's way but a shelter we refer, refer to as a lifeboat, it's not a cruise ship. So if you need to go, make sure you go, but do not expect a luxurious service, okay? And most importantly, have a support network, and that should include family, friends, caregivers, neighbors, coworkers, and especially I'm gonna guess for most of you, transportation providers, and always have a backup one, two, or three backup transportation providers in case someone cannot get to you. Okay. Next slide. Uh, make sure you communicate your emergency plan with your network and update it as need be. Make sure these folks in your plan know what your needs are and that they are prepared to check on you before and after a storm. Uh, for me, this works really well. My family and my neighbors always do check in and have a go bag. So other than the items, I'm sure you can guess that should be in a go bag, which is something you take with you when you have to evacuate. And you can also make up one if you need to shelter in place. Uh, that would be water, batteries, a first aid kit, perhaps a change of clothes in case you're drenched from a storm, things like that. You'll also want to make sure you have any assistive technology in that bag and ready to go. And please be sure it's labeled with a paint pen or something that's not going to wear off. And the other thing that uh, I recommend is aside from having food and water in there and updating it is having a list of your medication in there. And for those of you who use a smartphone, if you're able, or, and if you're not able, have an assistant help you take a picture of the medication you use, either the bottles or a list of the names of medication and the dosages. Because if you do need to go to a shelter, a lot of times they have nurses on staff who can provide, who can help get a refill for you. So I also carry a little pillbox with some of my med in there in case I, for instance, when I was at the airport the other day, if the flight was delayed, I have it with me. Okay, um, next slide. This, it, when, if you have time to go through later, this just recaps some of the items I mentioned. Have a list of your emergency contacts maybe include your physicians or insurance provider if necessary. And other things, again, like magnifiers, voice recorders, and perhaps pre-written messages, batteries for hearing aids, eyeglasses, cleaner, things like that. Anything that you might need when you're not home. Okay, next slide. It's just a list of uh, similar items, uh, include a list of your allergies, comfort items, and a little bit of money and, and put paperwork and money in plastic bags so they don't get wet. Also supplies for service animals, guide dogs. Please be sure you have their vaccination records or their vaccination tag on their uh, collar, a leash and a harness and a... People pack a little separate bag with food and water for their animals. They are required to shelter service animals right next to you in the shelter under the ADA. Okay, next slide. I have an example of a go bag here. We can go on to the next. And I talked a little bit about this already, uh, the ready kit, which would be something you would have in your home. Uh, again, if you have, um, Durable medical equipment with you in hand, make sure it's labeled. Okay, we uh, try to keep a supply. They used to say at least three days supply of items in your go bag. Now they try to say seven to 10, which I understand is hard, uh, but do what you can. Also, don't feel like you have to make this all at once if you're on a budget. You can add to the bag as, as you uh, can afford it. The dollar store has a lot of what you might need, flashlights, um, 
uh, ponchos, things like that. Uh, you can ask for items for your birthday or a holiday. And a lot of times bags and other things are given away, bottles of water, put it right in your go kit. Okay, next slide. Okay, we can do, skip that one. Emergency contact list, make, uh, we talked about that, but please just make sure you update it as necessary and have it in an accessible format. You may also want to fill out the file of life, which you can print out online for free or get from your Center for Independent Living and put that on your refrigerator in case someone has to rescue you. EMTs should know to look for that and they'll have your medical information, any contacts you want on there allergies and things like that. Okay, next slide. Shelter in place, I'll just run through this quickly, but please make sure you listen to trusted sources on the radio or the New Jersey Office of Emergency Management website or your township alerts as to when to shelter in place or when to evacuate. Okay, next slide. Know your escape routes and make sure they're still safe. Try to pay attention to the news. You could always call local fire, uh, fire officials or the Red Cross or the police to make sure it's safe to evacuate and alert those in your personal support network as to where you're going. Take your go bag, make sure it's accessible. A lot of folks keep it by the door. Okay, and go to the next. Uh, again, pre, try to pre-designate somewhere you could evacuate to and uh, otherwise go ahead and go to the shelter if they've stood one up. Okay, next slide. And some folks will bring along a laptop, tablet, note taker, anything like that to facilitate easier communication with the emergency response personnel or shelter staff. And uh, try to ask for pre-event information in accessible formats. Also, many of our counties, about two thirds, have a core advisory group, which we encourage you to join. It brings together people with disabilities with the first responders in the area so they can talk about preparedness and any gaps that might be out there ahead of time. So if a storm comes, let's say they are better prepared it, it helps both sides of the table. And I have a link, I believe, at the end if you're interested in that. Okay, next slide. Transportation, we spoke about that. If you need more information on that, please call your Center for Independent Living or some of the folks who will be speaking on this call, I'm sure have uh, resources in mind. Okay, next slide. Here's a list of resources, ready.gov, uh, ready.nj.gov, redcross.org, all these sites are very helpful. Okay, next. Uh, really quickly, I'll talk about Register Ready. We really do encourage folks to call 211 to register. I oversee this at the state level and it is free and confidential to do. If you call 211, they will do that for you. They speak multiple languages, if that's easier. And it allows the emergency managers in your community to better prepare for your needs. Uh, again, it is confidential, but if we are not aware of those who have needs out there, we cannot plan uh, accordingly. So we plan as best as we can, but it helps to know who's out there and what assistance is needed. You can let people know you need a car or, you know, need help evacuating or whatnot. Okay, um, next slide. Um, next slide. And that's it. This is my contact information. Actually, my email has changed, so maybe Lynette could put that in later, but kelly.boyd, and it's K-E-L-L-Y dot B-O-Y-D at njsp.org. And I'm, I'm sure Lynette will update that for everybody. Uh, that's it, thank you. All righty. 
Thank you, Kelly. That was great. And I know that um, I had, a, you know, as you were going through it, I, I always learn things when you're talking and um, those, some things uh, made me ask questions too, but I'll save those to the end. But um, I now want to introduce our next speaker, who is Sherlock Washington, who um, many of you know. Uh, Sherlock is a good friend to our office and the founder and president of SW Unlimited and an expert in assisted technology. So Sherlock, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very, very much, Lynette. I greatly appreciate uh, the introduction as well as being a part of this uh, fine panel. And Kelly, what a wonderful job. And I love the analogy. This is a lifeboat, not a cruise ship. So I will certainly be able to utilize that in some point in time. Uh, Yes, I, it's just uh, wonderful to be here and making sure that we all are aware as to what needs that we may have or what we need to be prepared with in case of an emergency. And uh, since I'm more of the kind of the tools and technology type of person, uh, SW Unlimited was formed in 1998. And uh, I am one that, who is someone who's blind. And of course, knowing how these tools are so very, very much uh, a part of our everyday lives and how instrumental they are for our independence and success as well. So uh, one of the things that I know that a lot of you have are smart devices, smartphones, or the Victor Reader streams, where we always are listening to books or we are either um, having uh, text files or documents or whatever the case is that we love to travel with that we make sure that we have with us. Uh, especially with the Victor Reader second generation being that it has uh, Wi-Fi capabilities and we're able to log on to all types of different news stations and outlets. These are the things that we want to make sure that we become very versed in using and very comfortable with in case of an emergency. The great piece is I don't have to tell anybody, hey, make sure you have your phone, right? Because we don't leave our homes without it. Everywhere that we go, whatever we need, whatever we do, we are using that technology. I know that I use my iPhone wherever I walk out to, and I have various apps on the phone that are truly uh, very imperative for me to have, such as Seeing AI. And for some of you, Seeing AI is, is an artificial intelligence. Um, it is an app that is put out by Microsoft, and they're very good in updating that app all the time. So it has things like, uh, you know, quick scan of a document where you can just hold the phone over the document and it starts to read. So let's just say you have mail or very imperative pieces of information that you don't want to basically have to put in a document, hold it in the right way. It just starts reading exactly what it sees. You can also do a document with it as well, money, currency reader, all those things that are built into that application. And of course, being able to know your surroundings. And a lot of these apps these days have that built-in ability that you can lift up the phone and it talks to you about the different surroundings. Here's the door. Well, in emergency situations, we always need to know where our exit is, where the door is, how we are laid out, where we're going to go, especially if we are going to be in a situation where we are at a shelter and that's not a familiar uh, situation for us. And I know that was mentioned earlier, to make sure that you register with your local, uh, you know, if you have a particular uh, city that you that you live in, or if it's the county, just make sure that they're aware where you are and how best that they can assist you in a case of an emergency. So very imperative. You have the A lady back here, which I can say at any point in time, Alexa, are there any emergency alerts for Linden, New Jersey? For an example, in Linden, New Jersey, it's 88 degrees Fahrenheit with clear skies and sun. Today, you can look for cloudy skies with a high of 91 degrees and a low of 72 degrees. Would you also like tomorrow's weather? No, thank you. But she is our aid and our assistant. As long as we do have electricity, and I know that a lot of times when we do have a storm condition, uh, sometimes we may need, uh, we, we lose electricity. But that's for some of us who may live independently and we may have a home and maybe we might have a backup generator or any of those other things because communication is key. I remember during Sandy, um, we had lost uh, some of the towers for AT&T and then some people who had Verizon were able to use that. So we want to make sure that we, you know, expand and say, well, you know, am I staying? Am I going to be leaving? Am I sheltering in place? 
And I so strongly recommend, especially when they uh, give you a very, very clear heads up and a warning that this hurricane, this tornado, whatever is coming in your area and you need to evacuate or leave, please take those warnings seriously. Okay, I know a lot of times, oh, you know what, I'm comfortable here. No, my home is well constructed or whatever the case is, I can stay here. Well, I suggest, especially when you're someone that lives alone, that the best solution is to be amongst and around others that you are going to basically be able to get some assistance from and not try to see if you can weather the storm alone. Okay, so some of these tools, as I said just briefly, and I know that uh, I'm not mentioning all of them, I'm just going to help support with some of the folks that are on the call today. And uh, if we need to just expand on a few things, just to share with you what's going on with some of these tools and technology so that you guys are aware and making sure if you are in the need as to how to use it. Um, I know that my information is there and everyone who knows me knows that I'm always more than willing to do my share. And when you call me, I will walk you through anything that you may be uh, needing or confused about to make sure you have better handle of using your assistive technology. So that's all I have for you at this moment. So thank you again and thank, uh, you know, Congressman Kim and Lynette and the whole crew to basically help put this on for us today. Greatly appreciate being a part of this. Thank you, Sherlock. Um, I appreciate it. And it took me a while when we were on our calls to understand who the A lady was, but then eventually I got it. But I did. You were all talking about the A lady, and I had no idea who, what you were talking about. So I, I appreciate that. And um, just as a heads up to everybody, I will. Um, when I send out the copy of the slides or when this will be posted, um, everybody's contact information will be in there. So you'll be able to contact Sherlock if you need to. And just a reminder, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat box and then we'll get to them towards the end. Um, so now I'd like to turn it over to Linda Melendez, who is the president of the National Federation of the Blind of New Jersey and my tech assistant here today. So take it away, Linda. Thank you so much, Lynette. Uh, again, I want to thank you and Congressman Kim and my fellow panelists for providing this very important and informative webinar. I want to also add that not only do I serve as a president, but I serve as Nana, grandmother, abuela to Lucas Matthew, who is going to be turning three years old today. So I oh, have to- Oh, happy birthday. I'm, no, not today, October, uh, August 29th, but yeah. Uh -oh. So I have to put props out for him because I'm abuela presidente. So um, I'm here to talk to you about Newsline and a few other things. So for those of you who do not know, Newsline is a free audio news service for anyone who is blind, low vision, deaf blind, or print disabled, and, and, and offers access to more than 500 publications. And our Newsline is sponsored by the New Jersey Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired. So Newsline or NFB Newsline is provided by the National Federation of the Blind, but there must be a state sponsor to help subsidize the cost of this expensive um, um, service, but it is an, so valuable that if you do not have Newsline, I strongly recommend that you get set up for Newsline. I want to also add that Newsline became um, a, a a, a pillar of strength for the blind and disabled community during COVID um, when we were not able to access things. And any state that did not have a state sponsor um, was offered to each person that did subscribe to it, whether it was state sponsored or not. And I wanna thank the Commission for the Blind who automatically every year sponsors the state of New Jersey. So for those of you who say the Commission for the Blind does nothing for you, they give you Newsline. Um, so, and it is available 24-7, 365, and it's also offered in Spanish. So there are two different types of accounts for Newsline. There's a traditional full access, and now there's a new limited access. So the full access um, would give you um, information to things such as a weather report when you first sign on, emergency alerts, latest COVID news. It offers 12 national newspapers, 20 breaking news sources, 17 international newspapers, over 50 magazines, job listings, and much, much more. I'll get into some of those more afterwards. The limited access 
um, is, is for children under 18, parents and guardians can set them up with an account and they'll get some of the stuff that adults get, such as the NFB channel, um, national news lines with the parameters that the parent or guardian sets on for them, but they'll get fun things um, for themselves, such as animal tales, um, catster, dogster, girl's life, highlights, J14, National Geographic for Kids, <clears throat> um, Stone Soup, and, 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 and other services um, for kids. And some of the additional services that adults will get um, will be um, <clears throat> international, including, um, including Financial Times, as well as the Vancouver Sun. Um, some of the magazines will be the Time, Consumer Reports, um, Guide Spots, of the Smithsonian, um, you'll get access to our, our state newspapers. Um, and also very importantly is the, is the weather alerts. So when something is happening, um, you'll get that as soon as you sign on. They're also giving you, you giving you the seven day forecast for your, that is associated with your local zip code. Um, it will also um, give you information on that scrolls along the bottom of your television screen, some of those alerts. It has over 10,000 job job listings um, from two national job sources, as well as TV localized um, 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 geared to your zip code. It'll give you um, retail ads as well. So now you might be saying, this is a great um, service, Linda. How do I get it? Well, you do this by contacting the New Jersey State Talking Book and Braille Set Center. Um, their number is 800-792-8322. This information will be included, and you'll ask for extension 821, and you'll get Christian Real, who is the New Jersey NFB Newsline Co Co Coordinator. You can also contact the National Federation of the Blind at 865-504. 7300 and you can request an application. Linda, Appli just, just, I'm not meaning to, 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 to cut you short. Just want to make sure that everyone else is aware that you can use the A lady as well. I'm going to get to that afterwards. Oh, I got I, it in my not, list. No. Okay, very good. Yeah, well, I got it here. all here. But all thanks right, for the enough. reminder. Thanks you go for it. Yes. Right. So, um, and so, and, and, and so you can download an application or you can mail in an application in order to receive the service. So once you fill out the application, um, then uh, then your registration will be processed, and you will receive a message containing your activation code and and instructions. So Newsline can be accessed through your iOS mobile device. You can download the app. It comes with a basic KNFB um, reader. Um, you can also access it through your phone um, with with the touch tone buttons you can access it from online you can access it from your Vic victor reader stream as long as you have internet service and you can access it from uh, from from the a lady um and i'll talk a little bit about that afterwards so once you get it activated and set up you'll dial in you'll say well i'm really confused linda and i don't know how i'm going to do all this well when you press one for the tutorial um it, it will give you a tutorial that you can always have access to to learn more about newsline and some of the options that you can press on Newsline would be two for your state information channel, like if you want to listen to the upcoming agenda for the National Federation of Biome New Jersey's convention being held November 10th through November 13th at, uh, at the Delta by Marriott Hotel in is in New Jersey. You can get information from there as well as well as other blindness organizations. You can press three for your local newspapers. Four, if you want to create your, your list of favorites so you don't have to go through all of this. Um, five will bring you to different states. Six will bring you to local store circulars, which they are now uh, becoming um, more readily available. During the pandemic, they were not there because volunteers would go into the Talking Book and Braille Center and record them. Um, seven will give you magazines. TV listings is eight. Job postings is nine. And you could press zero to get to your control panel. I do want to say um, that there are instructions for Alexa, so there's a lot. And and I will include this, but I do want to point out a few things that if you have a landline and you use a cordless phone, well, we may lose power. 
and after time, your batteries will die on the phone and you will not be able to recharge them. So I recommend to have a wired LAN phone available so that you can plug it in so that if we still have phone service, you can still access Newsline and get these news alerts whether your battery is working or not. I would also recommend that people um, get an external battery drive for their smart devices. So when your battery dies, if you don't have access to a car to recharge your phone, and um, you'll be without your smart device. If you have an external battery drive, you can plug it in and your, um, your phone or your tablet will still work. Um, they're light, they're compact, and they're fairly, fairly reasonable. Um, I want to also say that Newsline can be um, obtained from your Victor Reader stream. And I want to make sure that you have batteries and ways um, um, for your recorded devices. So you may want to check those out and see what types of batteries they um, charge. Um, I want to make sure that you're able to um, use your smartwatch because in an emergency, if you have a smartwatch and your battery dies, on your phone, you can make a call through through your smartwatch. Um, I also want to add that in your go bag, if you are blind or visually impaired, you should be using your white service cane, and you may want to pack an extra one in there in case, God forbid, something happens. Um, maybe you're losing it when you're getting out. If you got to be rescued by a boat or something like that, you still have another one in your backpack. And I also think it's important to have your phone numbers available and a in a nether source other than your phone, because if you lose your phone or you um, your phone battery dies, you still have access to these numbers and you're not dependent on just your phone. Um, so um, when you're working with the A lady, um, you would just ask her to open up the National Federation and it will walk you through the login prompts. And again, I'm gonna have information to share with everyone. So unless I missed anything, um, this would explain to you about Newsline and the valuable source that will help you during any type of an emergency or disaster. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Linda. Um, can, can you just talk real, real briefly about the National Federation of the Blind of New Jersey and, and what, what you guys do? I would love to. Thank you so much. So we are a 501c3 volunteer membership advocacy organization. We are one of 52 affiliates from our national office that is located in Baltimore, Maryland. We were established in 1940 so that we could achieve equality, opportunity, and security statewide instead of just state by state. Prior to 1940, the blind were trying to achieve equality um, and they were losing because we were doing it state by state. And now we um, go for equality on a federal level. New Jersey has seven chapters, one that's at large. So if you're in an area without transportation, we have divisions, programs, and projects. And to learn more about us, you can visit www.nfbnj.org. And Lynette has my contact information. Feel free to give me a call. All are welcome. Again, we are a community of blind and sighted individuals who believe in the hopes and dreams of the nation's blind, like Congressman Andy Kim, who supports one of our bills that is in Congress right now, which is the Affordable Technology um, Act. Great. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. All right, last but not least, we're going to turn it over to uh, Crystal Allen, who is the president of Eyes Like Mine, which is a nonprofit. And Crystal um, is going to take a little different approach and talk about um, the resources. Let's say there was an emergency or a disaster. What are some of the things that you should know about afterwards? And what are some of the resources that you could tap into? So, Crystal, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you all for listening. I just have a few tips to share, um, some of which I will be posting in the chat so that you can copy and paste it where you might find most accessible to you. And if you needed a tip on how to do that, you would go into the chat area and press Control A to select all, just as you would in a Word document, and then press Control C to copy and Control B to paste it wherever you would like to, if you're using a laptop or desktop. And I was just thinking about some resources that I could share. Um, Eyes Like Mine Inc. is a nonprofit. Our mission is to share awareness about the abilities and potential of individuals with vision loss through community service initiatives, 
comprehensive empowerment workshops and innovative social change awareness events and some resources that I thought could be useful because we are from New Jersey. Familiarize yourself with the New Jersey's website by visiting nj.gov. And there's a particular area on nj.gov that you might find some very helpful resources. And the link is called Assistant Services. Under Assistant Services, there's a, a few different choices to select from related to mental care, um, related to food access, because when you go through a natural disaster or some type of evacuation, you lose a lot, especially things related to your food security. Um, there's also information about the Community Food Bank of New Jersey, which also provides um, free food distributions in different select locations around New Jersey. So that is definitely um, an area you want to get familiar with. Um, if you are finding yourself that you, you use an iPhone or an Android and you are trying to um, preserve your battery, you may want to go into your settings and select low power mode so that your battery can last a lot longer than it normally would. Um, if you're on 50%, 80%, and even 5%, sometimes depending on where you are and what the circumstance is, it can last you um, anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour if your settings is on low power mode. And um, back to the New Jersey website. Um, so I mentioned nj.gov. Um, if you would like to find out how you can reconnect with services you need because you are low vision and blind, you definitely want to go into the area for the New Jersey Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired. And the Commission for the Blind has its own website, which is cbvi.nj.gov. But if you're not able to connect with the website, you can dial the telephone number to access statewide services from the Commission for the Blind, which is 973-648. 2111. And you can begin to connect with services there related to low vision blindness and deaf blindness. If you find that you're experiencing a, a traumatic um, aftermath of your evacuation or the natural disaster, and you just need a level of support, um, there's NJ Hope and Healing. NJ Hope and Healing is a great service that provides support group services, mental health care services, and other uh, resources that you can connect with. And that's hopeandhealing.net. Um, there's also a statewide directory that everybody can connect with, which is okay. NJ211. It's the statewide uh, resource directory, and you can visit their website at nj211.org or by simply dialing on your phone pad 211. There you can get information about COVID-related um, matters, uh, housing-related matters, uh, nutrition-related matters, shelter services, if you just find yourself not finding any place to go at all. And then if you're in a location where you have evacuated, you can't access any transportation, um, and you want to know when the next bus might be coming or the next train might be coming, you want to visit njtransit.com, and you can also call 973 275-5555 to speak to a live person to access um, any information about bus and train uh, schedules. Um, there's also a call center called Eye to Eye, which was officially established in 2018. And that is another area that you can get information and support services related to vision loss. And all of this information, although I shared a lot, I will definitely include in the chat. I already have it copied and ready to paste. Um, there's also another network of support group services called the Aspire Peer Support Network, which is under the New Jersey Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and there is over 60 plus peer-led support groups for all age groups, all uh, categories of specialty, whether it's related to parenting, Spanish speaking, deaf blindness, and many more. Um, 
So the person who's uh, the coordinator for this network is Susan Vanino, and her website is um, her website. Her email is susan at dhs.nj.gov, and that's s u s a n dot v a n i n o at dhs.nj.gov. And um, if you're just looking for regular resources in general, you want to familiarize yourself with your county websites, which I saw that Kelly did post in um, the chat. So, you know, New Jersey has 21 counties. And wherever you are in New Jersey, you want to familiarize yourself with the county's website. Um, so that you can stay connected to any resources that are posted on those websites, uh, take down the telephone numbers and store them in places that you'll be able to access. So in the event that maybe your device might be dead or um, you might not be able to dial whenever you get stationary, you're able to access those numbers from wherever you have stored them. Um, and then that's kind of pretty much what I had to share. And lastly, if you're looking for additional resources, just in preparation of whatever the unexpected could be, on October 15th, Eyes Like Mine Inc. will be having our first in-person resource fair on White King Safety Day, October the 15th. And um, we're going to be outdoors at Nat Turner Park in Newark, New Jersey. And there'll be more information about that resource fair that you can connect with. Um, on our website, which is eyeslikemine.org. And I also wanted to mention, you know, we use our mobility canes, many of us, and on the NFB's website, there's the white cane program. So you may also want to consider that, nfb.org, nfbnj.org, um, so that you can be fully equipped for whatever the unexpected may be. And thank you. Thank you so much, Crystal. That was amazing. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Juliana to, um, from who worked with Congressman Kim to help me out with the questions. But we got a question in earlier from somebody who um, was interested in this webinar. They were they were mentioning that um, that there is a lower incidence of uh, vaccination for people who are blind or COVID vaccinations because people felt like they, they couldn't access the, the mega centers or they had a hard time with the mega centers. And I know when we're talking about shelters, you know, COVID is not over. And if we do have to go for a shelter, you're in close contact with people, people might want to get vaccinated. Any, any advice, like was there any accommodations or anything like that for, for people who are blind or low vision that you know of or any advice for people who wanted to get the vaccine? Yes, so this is Linda Melendez. Um, I do want to say that Access Link will um, give you free transportation to a center uh, to a place to get your vaccine. Um, there's a process for that. I believe when you call Access Link, you will let them know that you're going for a vaccine shot, um, and they will um, not charge you. So it's free transportation to there. Um, during the during um, COVID. Um, Lyft was offering free coupons through the National Federation of the Blind. Um, maybe they'll come back with that at some point. Um, and, and so I, I was um, promoting that, um, not just to members of the NFB, but anyone who was blind. Um, and I also think if you call your county paratransit, they're offering help getting to the COVID sites to get vaccinations. And I have one more thing to add. Um, I participate in the weekly New Jersey Department of Health meetings to make sure that individuals with all types of disabilities can get the vaccine and or booster. Uh, right now we have a partnership with CBVI and I am not sure of all the locations yet, but if anybody is interested in getting the vaccine or if you're with a group, or any other type of organization that would like to host a clinic, please let me know. There is no charge to do that. We just ask you let us know when you would like it and about how many people, and they will set it up and they will be there. Great. Did Liana, if did you want to um, cover some of the questions in the in the chat group or if you had any questions? Absolutely. Um, so one of the questions that came in is specifically for Kelly. Um, in your presentation, you mentioned a file of life. Would you just be able to elaborate what exactly is that and how someone can obtain one? Sure. And I will make sure to provide the link uh, 
so you can send that out. So if you are able to Google file of life, you can print it out. A lot of times the centers for independent living will give it to you. That's where I received mine, believe it or not. And it comes in a plastic pouch that's clear, that sticks, it has a magnet, you stick it to the refrigerator and I put my name, my emergency contact. So let's say the EMTs come in and I'm passed out, uh, which has happened. They, there's a number on there for my parents and they could contact them. There's also a number for my doctors, list of my allergies, medication, things like that. And I do it in pencil so I can update it. And again, it's great because, because it is near my fridge and the Keurig splatters, it, it keeps it safe in the plastic. So it, it's free to download. Uh, and it, it's great to have as a backup. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and then another question came in specifically for Sherlock. So you mentioned some important phone applications that people can download. Do you have like a rough list of, you know, the most important ones or the most critical ones that you recommend people downloading? Well, I do not have a, a compiled list, but obviously if that's something that needs to be complete, I could certainly share and open up my phone and see the ones that I have. And I have uh, perhaps a couple hundred on my phone, but uh, going through, utilizing, kicking the tires, so we can certainly find like the top five apps that I feel would be most essential to have. So we'll certainly share that with everyone as well. Perfect, we appreciate it. And so this is Linda, and I'd like to put one of them on there, and FB Lose Line Mobile. There you go. I have a question, sort of counterintuitive. I think everybody has a really hard time evacuating. Like when, when people are telling you to evacuate, um, <laughs> nobody wants to do that. But I'm wondering if somebody who is blind or low vision should sort of heed those warnings early, like not wait until it's really like the police can't come get you or the shelter is filled up. It's sort of probably a little counterintuitive because you don't want to, but it, should somebody who is blind or low vision think like, oh, I better get there a little earlier and not wait? They should. It is better to go ahead. I know no one wants to do that, like you said, but if you wait until it's too late, it's putting your life at risk and the lives of our responders. And so this is Linda, and I'd like to add to that. So um, with being blind, you get training, technology, you learn techniques. And one of the things probably with any disability is to be prepared. And sometimes being prepared means calling the shot before you really need to. So if you get to the shelter and let's just say you have anxiety or that you're um, you know, uncomfortable, getting there early before the disaster actually hits, it's gonna give you time to get acclimated with the place. So you can bring your guide dog there, you can find out the guide dog relief area, you can possibly have somebody before it becomes hectic, give you um, a quick overview of what the shelter is like so you can start to get acclimated with it. So I would definitely go sooner rather than later because it's gonna help you in the long run with being acclimated with the location. That's exactly right. The shelter staff are supposed to help you become acclimated and you can actually request where you would like to be located. If you'd rather be near the food, great. It just let them know. If you'd rather be near a restroom for convenience, just let them know they're supposed to accommodate you. Great, okay. Juliana, any um, final questions uh, we for have, you? We have a comment um, from Tracy, and she said, when Sandy hit, um, they lost most cell service, so the, her advice is to have a backup phone to use as a smartphone, or I know one of the other panelists mentioned having like a rechargeable, like a, a, a portable charger that you could bring, so in case your phone does lose charge, so you have that as well. And then we have a, Ruth is raising her hand. Uh, hi, a terrific panel, Ms. Whitmore. Thank you and Congressman Kim for this event. So I've got a comment and a question, if I may. My comment is I have a go bag, but the snacks never last long because sometimes I need a little nosh and I scavenge the bag. And my question um, for both Kelly and Linda, it applies to both Register Ready and Newsline. Once you've signed up, are you signed up forever or do you need to re-enroll each year? Thank you. We actually, they have a system where after a year you become archived. So you're not out of the system, 
but you are supposed to update it annually. If you do it yourself, you'll get an email reminder. If you call 211, you'll just have to try to remember, maybe put it on your calendar at the end of the year. Hey, update this. You can update it any time. Um, it also, depending on the county, some emergency managers and their teams are really great about making sure they take the archive list and call people and update. So um, it depends, but I always try to put a reminder at the end of my calendar year to, to update that or as needed. Oh, and so Linda, um, yeah, yes, when you sign up for Newsline, um, you should not be deactivated. Um, but I will tell you that if you want to download books from Bard, um, if you don't download or use it every six months, you'll need to reactivate that. So if you're going to be at a shelter and you have your book player with you as one of your devices you put in your go bag and you want to get access to books, make sure that you're uploaded with the Talking Book and Braille Center. Thank you. Um, and then I, I guess just like uh, Juliana, we have time for like one more question or if there's any other questions. I don't see any other questions in the chat, but if anyone has anything else for you to put it in the chat or you can message one of us individually. Okay. Um, and uh, Crystal also just posted um, a phone number for accessible COVID tests for the visually impaired. And that mm -hmm. phone number is one 800 232 zero two three three in case anybody needs that information and what is that number what does that do crystal what is that um what will well, that number tell you uh well they'll listen to a phone module and they'll be able to order free uh 12 free accessible covid testings that they can self-administer themselves and um another thing i wanted to mention when you do use those uh self covid tests in the event that you're not able to see your results, you can use um, an app called Ira, which is A-I-R-A. -A. Um, you're gonna download it free from your app store, or Google Play store, and you can tap into a virtual assistant where they will do um, a free read of what your results are through their different promo options. Um, you can go to ira.io as well, aira.io. And, um, you know, it kind of, it beats waiting on lines, it beats on costs. Um, so you definitely want to store that number so that you can get your free uh, COVID test. They can be mailed direct to your address. And if you have an Amazon hub, wherever you live, they'll place it in the Amazon hub. I know from personal experience. And so, so this, oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Crystal. Uh, oh. So what I was going to add is these tests are different and separate than the other free COVID tests that are offered. So these tests um, um, were negotiated um, with the National Federation of Blind and, 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 and other government agencies so that this is an accessible test so that I think it comes back on your phone. So this way you, you can do this without, um, without help from anyone else. That is correct, uh, Linda, if I could jump in. Yes, I had to use one just a couple of weeks back and it does work as advertised. Uh, it did tell me that, you know, I was COVID negative and as well as sending an email to whatever email address you put in as you're signing up to take the test. So it's extremely accessible. So I certainly would recommend. Great, I mean, Congressman Kim puts out a monthly or now it's every month COVID newsletter. Um, so I would love to include that information in there. So I will be following up with all of you to make sure I have all the right links to include that in there. That's great. I never knew that, that's great information. Um, so we have um, Vincent, I think asked a question, Juliana. Uh, yes, and I saw Jennifer was raising her hand a second ago. I'm not sure if she's still on the line, but Jennifer, feel free to, to go first and you raise your hand first. And you're muted, Jennifer. Yeah, let me see. Uh... Jennifer star six. There you go. Hi. I was asking if you could please repeat that phone number 1-800-232 and I lost the last four digits. 0233. Thank you. No problem. And I just want to jump in. So what I could do is resend that out to our listserv and Lynette, I will uh, put you on the information. 
I will copy you on it um, because um, we got that um, information from our national president, Mark Riccobono. So I could share that with everyone Great. about the COVID test accessible. Yeah, I'd love to hear that. Okay, well, why don't we um, go to Vincent's question and, and then we'll close it out. Um, so Vincent's question is, how can we find a list of designated shelters in case of an emergency? And where can people with disabilities register with the state database? So to answer the first part of that question, it's a little tricky because I, again, they don't always designate a site until they can see the path of a storm, if, if that's the case. Uh, however, there are certain shelter sites that the state has pre-designated if they need it. And we have one at Stockton, Rockers, things like that. But that um, leads me to what I wanted to mention earlier. The list that I provided in chat of the county AFN coordinators, which is my role, but at the county level, feel free to email them or call them and they might be able to tell you some more specific information and also how they utilize Register Ready because it does vary a little bit per county. Some counties do wellness checks and door-to-door uh, -door or by phone, things like that. So again, perhaps probably for our audience today, the easiest way to register is to just call 211 and it's free. Otherwise, uh, folks can go to the website that's provided at the end of my slide and register that way. Um, if it's difficult for you, uh, we do allow friends and family and caregivers to help out with that. And, and that's free to do as well. And well, again, I wanted to add, can I add please? Sure, 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 Crystal. Um, and if you're also looking for shelter services, as I mentioned earlier, um, dial in 211. We'll also give you a directory of shelters that are in your local areas. Um, and That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. you, you can go to the website, nj211.org. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. This was just really wonderful information. Thank you to um, all the panelists for taking time to be with us today and sharing your wisdom with us. Um, for those who joined us, I truly hope that the information was helpful to you. And if you learned one or two things today that are going to make a difference or ease your mind if you see those terrible weather patterns on the TV or hear it in the radio. Um, I, I really truly hope that there is something that you took away from this. Um, as I mentioned before, I will be emailing this out. It will be available on Congressman Kim's website and uh, we will have the video attached to it. So something to look forward to if, you, if uh, I messed that up in the beginning. So thank you again to everybody. It's a beautiful day today. So I hope everybody could get outside, enjoy it, enjoy the weekend and uh, hope to be in touch again soon. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Lynette. And thank, thank you, Lynette. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As well. Bye. Everybody have a great rest of your day and a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Bye. Good, good talking to you, Sherlock. A pleasure, Chris. Take care. Bye now. Okay. Bye-bye, buddy. See you at convention. You got it. I hope to see everybody at convention. Yep. Bye-bye, yes. all. Bye-bye.